Hey everybody, welcome back to the Zenith 750 Super Duty Build. This is episode nine. So this is going to be another quick episode because I just wanted to give you my updated thoughts on primer for my particular airplane. Now this is my third aluminum airplane that I've built. My first one was a Vans RV7, and in that airplane, I primed every single surface, all of the skins, everything was primed. Even little brackets and things like that that I had to make uh, were primed. When I built my cruiser, same thing. Every single thing is primed on that airplane. Even if I made like a little tiny bracket, it was primed uh, for protection. And now that I look at those, well, the, the, the RV I sold, but now if you take my Zenith, for example, it's sitting here in Michigan. 99% of the time it's in my hangar. The only time it's outside is when I go fly it. You know, what is all that time, weight, and money I spent on primer really doing for this particular airplane? So that's what got me thinking on my Super Duty. Uh, just ways that I can balance the time, the weight, and the money that it cost to add primer to the entire airplane. Now I know in episode two, I mentioned that I wanted to prime the whole airplane because I didn't know in the future where I'd be living. And if I happen to live in a humid, salty area like California, it'd be nice to have the extra protection. And when I retire in 11 years, I will move. I don't know where, probably Arizona or Utah or Idaho or Nevada. Those would probably be my top four states. But I can tell you, I will not ever be living in California, Oregon, Washington, or anywhere on the East Coast. So part of that balancing act that I'm trying to come up with on this airplane, because I don't want this to stretch out into another five-year project like my cruiser, is you know, what really do I need to prime on this airplane? And keep in mind, I'm not trying to convince you guys of anything on what to prime or not to prime on your particular airplane. I'm just mentioning it because I'm documenting my airplane build on this channel. And because I did originally say I was going to prime just like everything, you're going to see parts now that aren't primed. And so I know people are gonna ask. So I figured before we continued on to episode 10, where we're starting to build the wings, I would just kind of get the primer question out of the way. So with this Super Duty, the first couple episodes were building the rudder and the, the horizontal stabilizer and the elevators and stuff like that. I did prime everything on those parts. And then when it came time to start building the wings, the first step was to rivet on the spar extensions. And before I riveted those on, I weighed, or I primed them, but I weighed them before and after primer. So that each spar extension was one pound, six ounces before primer and then one pound, 6.4 ounces after primer. So roughly a half an ounce of primer on each spar extension. There's two of them, so that's a, an ounce of primer, plus you know, the doublers and things like that. Now what I did was, and this is very unscientific, but I just wanted to see if I could kind of guesstimate the total weight of primer on this airplane. So what I did was I took the surface area of the spar extension, and I kind of guesstimated for like the rest of the wing. I said, okay, all these, ribs and stuff are probably equal to about the surface area of this many spar extensions. Then of course you have the spars and all that kind of stuff and the skins. And what I figured was, and again, this is just a rough estimate, you know, I figured there's about three to four pounds of primer on both wings or total for the wings. And then probably like three to five pounds of primer on the fuselage, depending on how much you prime. So let's just, let's just say for sake of argument, there's 10 pounds of primer on the airplane. Well, that's 10 pounds of, of weight that you're hauling around all the time. For me personally, I don't feel like I really need. I can guarantee you I'll never live in a really salty environment. The 6061 alumina is already very corrosion resistant. Like I just really, I felt like when I was priming my spar extensions that I was really just wasting my time. Now the primer I'm using is this Rust-Oleum primer and it is $5 a can or $5.50 a can, I think, at either like Ace Hardware or Home Depot. So it's pretty inexpensive. But if you look at my Cruiser or the, the, the Vans RV, I used Napa 7220 primer, which is like 10 or $11 a can, mostly because I didn't know about this stuff at the time. <laughs> 
So, and I probably used, you know, I don't want to exaggerate, I don't even know, 40 or 50 cans of primer on that airplane. I would buy it in, in cases at, at Napa. <laughs> so it's a lot of money on primer. It's a lot of time to, to scuff and clean every single part. Um, so it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, and it adds a lot of weight to the airplane. Again, I just don't think on my particular airplane in this case that I need to go through all that time and money and hassle to prime every single part. So let me tell you what I am going to do going forward. I'm only priming the mating surfaces. What that means is if two pieces of aluminum touch, then I will prime that part of the aluminum that touches just for a little extra protection in case water gets trapped in there or something like that. Now, since I was gonna do that, I ordered this Cortec primer because it's, it's easy just to pop a can open, you brush it on and you're done. Well, that's what I thought. Honestly, I don't particularly like this. It goes on very thick and I do think you can thin it, but I, I didn't, I just did it right out of the can. And the problem I had with it was it kind of starts, you just brush it on with like an acid brush and it kind of starts to fill in the holes. So now in order to get a rivet in a hole, you kind of have to clean that hole up and get the Cortec primer out of there. And also it says it takes 60 to 90 minutes to dry. I found uh, that it took a lot longer than that. I brushed it on the spar and I went to the gym. I worked out, took a shower, drove home, cooked lunch, <laughs> came back in the hangar and it still wasn't dry yet. So it takes a long time to dry. I've actually found it easier if I'm going to just prime a, a section of the spar, for example, where a rib will get riveted, I just shoot it with a, 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 a can of primer, or this, this uh, Rust-Oleum stuff, and it's just as quick. It's quicker and easier and it dries almost instantly. So that's what I'll be using going forward, just on the mating surfaces. All right, I figured I'd just give you a sneak peek of uh, the next few episodes. This is where the right wing is at right now. It's completely built, riveted together. The bottom wing skins are riveted on. Now I could have kept going with the top skins on here, but I want to get this wing caught up to the other wing. So this wing right now is ready to rivet on the bottom skins. Um, but I guess in episode 10, the next episode, I think we're still working on this area here. So go watch episode 10, 11, 12, 13, and so forth. We'll get you up to speed on the rest of the wings. <laughs>